Hello everyone, welcome to Antagi channel. My name is Rahi and we continue talking about subscription billing in Microsoft Desk 365 Finance and Operations. Today, let's dig into the Revenue and Expense Deferrals module. The Revenue and Expense Deferrals module lets you manage revenue in compliance with ISC 606 and IFRS 15 accounting standards. This feature will enable revenue recognition on document types beyond sales order, allowing greater control of revenue. Managing deferrals at the line item level puts you in control of the revenue recognition process. Having an automatic process helps reduce mistakes that can creep in through manual processes and saves time. Revenue and Expense Deferrals module lets organizations eliminate manual processes or external systems by allowing users to manage revenue in one system. Real-time reporting provides insights into critical information, such as monthly recurring revenue. Today we will overview the process of using Revenue and Expense Deferral module starting from configuration, then create the deferral schedule and in the end we will look at the final postings. Everything begins at the Revenue and Expense Deferral parameter. Here you should set up the default journal name for revenue recognition and deferral posting method. It can be either to balance sheet or directly to profit and loss accounts. Moreover, you can set up various parameters to make your user experience easier. For example, if you want deferred amounts to be equal per period, what default deferral start date should be, etc. Next, you should create deferral templates. They define your deferral schedule, basically how you want your revenue and expenses to be deferred, how long and how frequent. One of the essential settings are deferral defaults. Here you define main accounts which will be used for deferred revenue and expenses. The settings are flexible because you can set up different accounts up to specific item or counterparty account. You can also define which deferral templates should be used for each item or item group. Finally, you can set up items deferred by default, so you don't have to manually create deferrals every time. Once an item is set up as deferrable, the deferral schedule is automatically created when items are added. Now, after all the setup is finished, let's look at using revenue and expense deferrals, for example, on sales order in account receivable module. It is also important to add that this functionality also integrated with free text invoices in accounts receivable module, purchase orders and invoice journals in accounts payable module, and general journals in general ledger module. After creating a sales order and adding product lines, you can see deferral settings using deferrals form. Here you can edit main accounts for deferrals and deferral schedule if it is necessary. Moreover, here you can turn on or turn off revenue and expense deferrals for this sales order line. After posting invoice for our sales order, system automatically creates deferral schedule that is available at revenue and expense deferrals module. One schedule is created for revenue and other for consumption expenses in case you need to recognize them independently. Deferral schedule form lets you easily recognize revenue and expenses, modify deferral settings if any mistakes was made previously and analyze revenue recognition using analytical data that are calculated automatically. If you need to create revenue and expense recognition journal, you can do it from deferral schedule form or using periodic operation for mass processing. You even can set up the recurring process, for example, to run once a month so you don't have to make any manual work at all. After you recognize revenue and expenses in the deferral schedule, you can see revenue recognition journal number and voucher number. This journal contains recognition postings. Now let's revise the results. Here are transactions that were posted. At first, when we posted the invoice system used our deferral accounts for revenue and cost of goods. Accounts receivable account was debited from deferred revenue account and deferred consumption was debited from stocks account. Later, when we started revenue and expense recognition, our revenue and COX accounts appear. So after full recognition, the closing balance for our deferral accounts will be zero. Finally, let's look at waterfall report that is available from the box in subscription billing workspace. It is powered by Power BI, so you may easily make changes to it. 
This report lets you analyze effectiveness of your revenue recognition process, review unrecognized amounts up to each customer, invoice or main account. This data allows you to see the full picture of your sales and purchases. It can help you with making business decisions. So that was all for the revenue and expense deferrals module. Also check out our first part about subscription billing in the link below.